I was introduced to the orchestra by a former colleague who is a, also a former board member. And Glenn uh, invited me to a concert one evening after he learned that uh, I was a performing musician in a former vocation. And uh, I attended the concert and was, was really excited because it was something fresh, something uh, different than what you normally find in performing arts in San Diego. Of course, you know, when I, when I first started as a conductor, it was the technical ability. But now, by far, it's their heart. I would rather have a whole orchestra of mediocre musicians that play their, their hearts out than uh, a whole group of virtuosos straight out of some major conservatory who, who don't want to give to an audience. It's not a classical music experience, per se. Classical music is involved, obviously. But what it is, is it's a lifestyle experience. It's so much more than just walking into a room, sitting down, hearing a Mozart symphony. The last three symphonies by Mozart are a bit of a mystery. They, we're not quite sure why they were written, or even if they were performed. There wasn't an obvious commission, and the nature of these three symphonies are so extraordinary. They go far beyond just a simple classical symphony. They are just about uh, a philosophical statement. But the 41st symphony also stands alone. It's called the Jupiter Symphony, not by Mozart's own name. And the idea is that the first movement particularly is so joyful, it evokes the, the, the god Jupiter. Um, but there's something Olympian about this symphony as well. But instead of talking about it, let me show you why the symphony is so extraordinary. Let's look at the first movement, for example. It begins with just three bursts of notes. You can see it right there. And these three bursts are so incredibly brave of a composer to just make a, such a short statement, introduce the first character, and then stop. Followed by a very gentle response in the strings right here. Again, so brief but so potent. And then again, the three bursts right there, and then the strings answer once again. Most symphonies begin with an eight bar phrase, a 16 bar phrase, a long melody, but Mozart does something very, very different. This is what it sounds like. The second movement also begins in an extraordinary way. Very lyrical introduction by the violins, punctuated, almost interrupted abruptly by the rest of the orchestra. It's a great beginning to say this is not your ordinary slow movement. The third movement is a minuet, and that's not so unusual. Haydn had third movement minuets, and Beethoven had third movement minuets, although, albeit, they were very, very fast. But what's wonderful, what Mozart does, is he tends to use the trio. The trio is the middle part of the minuet. It's usually an ABA form, you know, minuet number one, and then the trio is minuet number two, and you go back to tr uh, minuet number one. It's a great time for Mozart to always show his humor. He always does something very unusual. And as you can see, in the yellow, there's a brief statement by the winds. It's what we call a cadence. It's like the end. And then the strings in blue and the oboe in a much more verbose, 
much more talkative fashion. Eighth notes, ba ba be da ba 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 be da ba 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 ba. And then the woodwinds interrupt again. The end. And the oboe and violins are very insistent. They they want to say much more. Ba 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 da ba 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 be da. So I think that's that little motive, that two-note phrase, is probably one of the world's shortest melodies. I think. And now we go to the fourth movement, which is really the crowning achievement of this symphony. It's the most famous for many, many, many reasons. It's basically fugal, and a fugue is a Baroque form that really shows the understanding of musical composition. Even though Bach was the master of the fugue, Mozart, Beethoven, all the great composers, Brahms, all studied and had to know how to write a really good fugue. In fact, uh, writing an excellent fugue is sometimes part of the examination process for a person studying composition at a university. And S Mozart goes far beyond what an average composer would do with a fugue. And he waits until the 41st symphony until he writes a really grand fugue. And there's a wonderful moment I want to share with you at the end. We call it the coda uh, part, the, the end of the fourth movement, where he juggles not one melody, not two melodies, not three or four. I sound like Ron Paul Peel, don't I? <laughs> but wait, there's more. <laughs> but five different motifs right there. And this first one, this motif number one, is that the basic theme. You'll hear the violins introduce it in the beginning, but at this point you'll hear this, this melody right here in the bassoons and horns at this point. It's simple, simple melody. Do, re, fa, mi. And then in the second motif, which is much more rapid, much more virtuosic, let's hear the violas demonstrate this. And in a similar virtuosic motive, later on, we'll see this running down. It's just a little bit different, but it's got the same feeling. Let's hear the cello, cello demonstrate this melody. Thank you so much. And then we get these little tiny motifs. Look at motive number four, which almost seems like a little bird, a bird comment. Let's hear the appropriately the flute demonstrate that. The final short motif is this hippity hoppity motif with these wide leaves. Bop, bop, beep, bop. Sue, can you demonstrate that? Thank you very, very much. And Let's see how Mozart puts all of these ideas together. I mean, it's one thing to have it make sense, but it's another thing to have it be great art. Now, this is, an ex this is the first uh, full page, the orchestral score as you see it. I, I went crazy with the colors and to show you how it all lays out. The yellow is that whole note theme, that majestic whole note theme we saw in the bassoons and French horns. That, that first running theme in the violas is in blue. And, and you can see how it jumps from instrument to instrument, from line to line, the violas and the second violins and the first violins. And then you see that little bird theme start in the lower, in the lower celli. Ba -ba -ba -bum -ba -dum. Ba -ba -ba -bum. And that hippity hoppity melody in green, they, they play briefly. Ba -ba -ba -bum. And now, as it goes further, you can see it gets more and more complex and all these melodies being tossed around like a ping pong game. It's going back and forth to different instruments. It is just glorious. And you can see in the middle where it's not highlighted where the brass and the timpani come in to underpin all of that. Not a note is wasted in that wonderful coda. One more thing, in the development section of this, Mozart takes us through in a mind-bending tour of all 12 keys. This is extraordinary in the classical period. You might investigate maybe three or four different keys, but Mozart actually goes through all 12 keys, and it's just his virtuosity. He's just having fun. He's no, he knows exactly what he's doing in this glorious finale. 
In fact, let's play a little bit of that for them, shall we? This is, um, again, this is the end of the fourth movement, and go ahead and see if you can follow along as best as you can. We'll take you through the first two pages, and then we'll give you a break and just listen for just a while. Did you follow all that? <laughs> so as you see, what's really important, ladies and gentlemen, is to realize we think of Mo Mozart as being the icon of the, of the classical period, which starts somewhere in the 1750s and goes through the, the early part of the 19th century. And we think of him as being this perfect uh, architect of the classical period and of the classical symphony. But as you can see in this demonstration, he's much more than that. He's a revolutionary, he's a dreamer, he's a creator. So ladies and gentlemen, it's our pleasure to present Symphony Number no. 41, in C major by Wolfgang Amadeus Mozart. 